In this video, we will learn a simple and easy method to model this functional 3D printed wall hook in FreeCAD ready for 3D printing. Hi everyone, welcome back to CAD CAM Course YouTube channel. This is the FreeCAD for 3D printing series, a complete learning journey designed to help you go from basic modeling to designing functional ready to print parts. Each video in this series covers a practical real world model, something you can actually print and use at home, in your workshop, or in your next project. As always, we'll break the entire model into clear, easy to follow steps and build it piece by piece. To make it even easier for you to follow along, I've also prepared a step-by-step -step PDF guide. You'll find the download link in the video description below. All right then, let's get started. Step one, creating the profile sketch. Let's begin by creating the core profile of the hook. This is the main shape that defines the overall geometry. In FreeCAD, switch to the part design workbench and click on create new sketch. When FreeCAD asks you to select a plane, choose the front plane, also known as the XZ plane. Now grab the polyline tool and start sketching from the origin point. Draw a rough outline of the wall hook. Just follow the general shape as shown in the drawing. Whenever you draw vertical or horizontal lines, make sure they are correctly snapped. You'll notice small vertical or horizontal symbols appearing beside the lines. That's how you confirm the constraint. After completing the outer shape, draw the inner triangular rib as well. At this stage, don't worry about exact sizes or proportions. We'll fix all that soon with constraints. Now our rough shape of the hook is ready. It might look off, but don't worry. We'll make it precise next. Let's apply geometric constraints to make the sketch behave as intended. First for this inside triangle. Select the inside triangle's vertical line and click the vertical horizontal constraint tool to make it perfectly vertical. Similarly, pick the horizontal line and constrain it to be horizontal. Now, hold control, select the inclined line of the triangle and the outer inclined line of the hook. Then click the parallel constraint tool. This makes both lines parallel. Next, select these three key points that need to align vertically and apply the vertical constraint to make them collinear. Do the same for these two points here as well. Now let's add the dimensional constraints as per the drawing. Use the dimension tool and add overall length, 57 millimeters, width of rib, 6 millimeters. Again, this width is 6 millimeters. Distance between the two legs, 20 millimeters. Height of the short leg, 10 millimeters. Height of the long leg, 25 millimeters. Width of the middle rib, 6 millimeters. Slanted rib thickness, 6 millimeters. Bottom width, 6 millimeters. Once all the required dimensions are added, you'll see the sketch turn green. That means it's fully constrained and ready. Now, close the sketch. Back in the part design workbench, with the sketch selected, click on pad. In the pad parameters, check the symmetric to plane box. This ensures the body extrudes evenly on both sides. Set the pad length to 15 millimeters and click OK. And that's it. Our core body is ready. That completes step one. Step two, creating mounting holes. Next, Let's add two mounting holes to fix the hook to the wall. In FreeCAD, rotate the model to view the backside face. This is the face that touches the wall. Select that face and click Create New Sketch. Before sketching, click on the External Geometry tool and select the two side edges. This will bring them into the sketch as reference lines. Now grab the Circle tool, select Center on this horizontal axis, and drag out a rough circle. Don't worry about the size or position now. Similarly, draw another circle. Let's constrain them. These two circles are equal, so hold control, select both circles, and apply the equal constraint. Next, grab the dimension tool and add the distance between this circle and the edge as 7 millimeters. And the distance between this circle and the edge as 17 millimeters. Finally, set the diameter of any one circle to 4.2 millimeters. The sketch now turns green, meaning it's fully constrained. 
Close the sketch. With the whole sketch selected, click on Pocket Tool. We want these holes from this back face to the front face only, not through all. So in the pocket parameters, change the type to up to face. Then rotate the model to select the front face up to which the holes are to be extended. The holes are now made. Click OK to confirm. And that completes step two. Step three, drilling the tool access hole. Now we'll add the large access hole on the front. This hole allows you to insert a screwdriver or drill bit while mounting the hook. Rotate the model and select this inner flat face. We won't drill the hole directly from this face, but we'll use it as a reference plane for sketching. Click on Create New Sketch. Now we are in Sketcher Workbench. The sketch plane is partially hidden by the existing model, so we can't see where we're sketching. To fix this, click on the View Section tool. This tool slices the model along the sketch plane, allowing you to clearly see the area where you will draw. Once activated, the plane is visible. Next, we need to draw a circle of 10 millimeters diameter, which should be concentric to the small hole we created earlier. We cannot directly snap to the center of that small circle because it belongs to a different part of the body. To solve this, we use the external geometry tool. Click on the tool and then select the smaller circle. This brings both the center point and the circumference of that circle into the current sketch as reference geometry. Now grab the circle tool, click on the reference center point as the center of the new circle, drag outward and set the diameter to 10 millimeters, then press enter. And just like that, the sketch for this access hole is complete and fully constrained. Finally, close the sketch to move on to the pocket operation. With the sketch selected, click on the pocket tool in the part design workbench. You might notice something here. The pocket is moving in the opposite direction from what we want. No worries, simply check the reverse box in the pocket parameters. This will flip the direction so that the hole goes through the correct part of the model. Next, we need to define how far the pocket should go. Since we want this hole to pass completely through the body, change the pocket type to through all. Now click OK to confirm. And just like that, step three is complete. The access hole is now ready. Step four, adding fillets and chamfers. Now that the main shape and holes are ready, we'll give the model a finished professional look by adding fillets and chamfers. This not only improves the appearance, but also helps reduce stress concentration, making the hook stronger for 3D printing. First, we'll add countersink chamfers to the mounting holes so that the screws sit flush with the surface. Back in the part design workbench, activate the chamfer tool. Set the size of the chamfer to one millimeter, click select, and then choose the two circular edges of the screw holes. Once selected, click OK. The countersink chamfers are created, ready for screws to sit neatly. Next, let's round off the edges using fillets. In this model, there are two types of fillets, two millimeters and four millimeters. For two millimeter fillets, activate the fillet tool. Set the radius to two millimeters. Click select and choose all edges that should have a two millimeter radius. Rotate the model if necessary to select edges that are not immediately visible. Once all relevant edges are selected, click OK. For four millimeter fillets, activate the fillet tool again. Change the radius to four millimeters. and choose all edges that require a four millimeter fillet. Rotate the model to ensure you capture all the edges. Click OK to apply. Finally, we'll add chamfers to the long, sharp outer edges to reduce sharpness. Activate the chamfer tool.
set the size to 1.5 millimeters, click select, and choose one edge per long loop around the model. Once all edges are selected, click OK, and that's it. The 3D model of the wall hook is now complete. You can follow these steps to create one for yourself, and you're free to adjust any dimensions to fit your requirements or preferences. Now that our wall hook model is complete, it's time to export it from FreeCAD so it's ready for 3D printing. Start by selecting the body from the model tree, then go to File, Export, or you can simply press Ctrl plus E for a shortcut. In the Save as Type drop down menu, select 3D Manufacturing Format, .3MF. The 3MF format is recommended because it not only stores the 3D geometry of your model, but also keeps associated manufacturing data such as color, material, textures, lattice structures, and support structures. Once you've selected the format, click Save. Next, open your 3D printer slicer software and load the exported 3MF file of the wall hook. Rotate the model so that the large flat back face lies flat on the build plate. This orientation is important. It reduces the Z travel distance, making the print more stable, and also minimizes or even eliminates the need for support structures. Once oriented correctly, slice the model in your slicer. Check the preview to ensure the layers and supports look correct. And that's it. The wall hook is now fully prepared and ready to 3D print. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video subscribing to the channel, and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss upcoming lessons. If you'd like to support my work and help me continue making high-quality tutorials, consider buying me a coffee on Ko-fi. Your support, no matter how small, goes a long way in helping me dedicate more time to creating detailed, beginner-friendly content for this community. You'll find the coffee link in the description below.